So that's the kind of thing I'm saying when I'm saying that you can go. If I was really smart about this, I would start this at 10 30, you would have a thought maybe. Uh, anyway, here we are. Uh, so we've got uh, a number of live demos, a number of videos. But for those of you who uh, aren't members of the class, this is what this class is all about. You can see our video, it's a little micro processor, uh, and it's a lot of fun to say. It's really easy to learn how to use it. Uh, it's a programmer and powerful enough to do all of this stuff that you can do today. Uh, now, there are a few projects that you can do, a few more videos, a few projects that you can do, uh, and maybe we'll see if you can talk about them as we go. Uh, but basically, it's this thing, and this thing makes all this kind of stuff possible. Uh, this is a my son was a piece of paper, and this is a little race car race wheel that I made again, more or less random life. Uh, but the fun thing is that you carry around with you, you know, drive, fucking be all fun. So, um, there's a lot of demos and stuff that I've put together, but mostly this class or this lecture today, like the presentation today, is going to be of students did in this class. It was great to be able to do sort of present and work in public to the rest of the world. Uh, if you don't know, we're live streaming this online, so there's to be tens of people who can walk into the today. Uh, and so I hope you'll be able to online and see what we're doing here. How's the audio feel? Any idea? It's not bad, actually. It's not bad? Cool. Speak up. You can have a seat. And what we'll do is, I guess, I was going to make a really good order, like plan things and the
Let me have Graham ready to rock that. <laughs> Clearly a wrong number. Okay. So. So this is a uh, RGB color clock. So what it does, uh, there's a clock display on the front here which displays the time. This uh, white box up here is a RGB lamp, a uh, little Christmas tree inside with a light strip. And that, light, that lamp changes color depending on what time it is. So uh, the hours represent the red value of the RGB lamp. The minutes represent the green, and the seconds represent the blue. So, plug this in. This should all be set up for the Wi-Fi network, but just using her hot. So in a second here, the display should display syncing. So it does, we don't set the time ourselves, it actually syncs to a time server on the internet, so it always maintains correct time. So, let's see. There we go. So it's syncing now, and provided our uh, hotspot is working, it should display the actual time uh, right there. So it's 909 right now, which looks to be 909. <laughs> and uh, so the so the color will change there uh, at the turn of the minute. So just like that, and uh, that's essentially the entire project. A uh, little plug and play lamp that changes color. So I want to remind people here that these folks and everybody here built this stuff from scratch, basically, right? And so I love this one particularly because of the sort of polished finish. I could have this in my in my living room. What, tell us a little bit how the colors, like what color corresponds to what time? Uh, the red is uh, the hours value. The minutes uh, does green and seconds do blue. Uh, so uh, every minute, it would be like a different color, a different flow of colors. Yeah, it's a 24 hour clock. So when we look for a bluer tone to a bluer, it's a better tone to stay for us. So. You feel what time is this yeah. Cool, any questions? Comments? Okay, thanks very much. So, um, as you can see, though, as it can get temperature and humidity, 
And you can see it varies a little bit. I'm just touching the, the temperature sensor for 19.25, 19.5. So it's really easy. Yeah. And then you can watch the community sensor to see a little change. <coughs> there you go, see just right now. It's also quite sensitive to light, so if I cover it, it should uh, definitely down. It's pretty neat. But um, the final project will be actually using our original feel, which is a different work. It's uh, you can only program it wirelessly, um, and there's a little XP on the back of it. It's kind of cool. And then I'm going to mount that here with all my sensors, and then it would sort of just hang up anywhere and give the information back to another argument of the house that has an LED, which then gives me temperature and humidity, and I have barometric pressure sensor as well. So um, one of my later milestones was to do an anemometer or wind meter. And uh, this is probably the coolest part about the project because I would better make coding. So, um, but I ended up just going to uh, Roma and getting some uh, plumbing supplies and uh, some ball bearings and roller blades. And I just put them all together. And this whole thing probably cost me about 10 bucks. So, or less even, considering how much anemometers cost. You know, commercially available, $100 plus. So, I mean, considering the total price of Higher light station is under hundred dollars. It's that's pretty good. And it's plus time, of course. But yeah, yeah. Do you have any questions? Yes, yeah, no, I, I have a weather station like this in my house with a nanometer, hydrometer, all this kind of stuff. It was relatively expensive compared to this. I'll keep you making one of these. <laughs> how, how would you calibrate the anemometer? Um, this actually, you need a data logger so that you can actually put something with an SD card on it. Right, no, no, no. So you can SD card, and then you just go to your car and you set cruise control. You know, take it out the window, and then there's a desk program that uh, I have with the guy. You know, I'm just trying to pull up people to see it. Um, he has a calibration program, and then what's that your speed? And then we'll water the tank, and then you let go, and then you have to, you know. And you can plug this in pretty much anything. Actually, there are two magnets in here, so I'm not to say all the words. Yeah, but there's two magnets inside there. Then I'll have a hall sensor on here, and then it'll rotate. And then it's a latching hall sensor, so it switches from pull to pull on the magnet, it'll turn the uh, sensor on and off. So, yeah, fantastic. Super thanks.
the lights should light up. And then when you press the start button, it'll play through. And then if that's step is set, it'll play that sound. Also change the sound by holding the shift button. Then clicking on the sound. So, uh, I also have an LCD screen for it uh, in the final version uh, that you can use and um, other options where you can use like, like step sequencing instead of just a uh, drum sequencer. Um, so, that's basically it. I, I made a case out of it for like. So, once again, a reminder people are building these things from scratch from the beginning. I'm, I'm just blown away at the kind of amazing set of moments. Any uh, questions, comments? I thought you were giving us a little concert or something. Super cool. So shift registers for the input buttons, shift registers for the for the output sounds, and uh, this is like volume control and stuff. Then these are going to be for the menus. All the changing the BPM and things like that is um, super awesome. All right. Anybody want to particularly want to go next? I think there's some. Think about it. He's thinking about it. I'll think about it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
uh, also to other buttons around here for menus and certain things like that. Um, there's these sliders, which were, I thought, perfect potential to make these multiple buttons, just long buttons. They don't really read the values consistently the way I thought they would. Sometimes they're a bit busy, but they still work. I need them to. Okay, um, now this uh, our data that we have doesn't actually work to do this on its own. Um, there are some videos out there that are pre programmed. Mine um, I have to essentially uh, update the form to flash the firmware. Right now, it simply thinks
And I'll just fix and turn it and that will help me make the case today. So that signature uh, thing's pretty easy if I want to change it in the future. And uh, this thing's going to be older. Any questions? Yes, we'll leave this stuff. Thanks very much. Why don't we get um, Kate on the list? Specifically for the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi, and just 
just kind of ran the script and all of started up. Sounds like the sound is. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, yeah, we Oh, yeah. So the control is a little bit. We didn't have a case for it. <laughs> Aesthetics aside, it works for it. So we got a little card box here to fill in the room. Uh, but it's like a super tiny controller, but it has an analog stick instead, so it works with other things. And it has LR buttons over here, and you, know, you can do whatever you want. Go around, play, go great. Uh, and then to end it, I believe it's analog stick, correct? And then analog stick, so I think that. And then from here, if it's good again, it's an A button. Oh, okay. And so if there's, there's a like an emulator mechanism. You have to go into your mouse and bring that up. You, know, you don't want to be playing a game and suddenly bring up the menu and die. That's not good. And so once more, I want to leave the whole system. My favorite part is it's the most awkward button combination, so you can never press the game. The bottom button, the top button, and the select button, and close it for you. And uh, one thing you have to know about Red Bird 5 is you have to actually go, uh, go ahead and shut it down and not just you know, remove the tower because you might uh, break it. But they like, doesn't like it when you turn it off. So yeah, you yeah. just you need to go off with the controller. Now one thing we'll say is that originally we were going to do it with the Bluetooth except when we went to did the Bluetooth we found out that it uh, wasn't working what we wanted to. So we have a Bluetooth module on there and we can't just use it. We can get it to connect to a computer, we just can't get it to be the controller. Which is a shame. We can pretend. We can make that thing light up and do nothing. <laughs> uh, but I think that's it. Any questions? Uh, questions, ideas, comments? Uh, how much memory does it take to um, Like, uh, for Henry, I'm talking about hard disk chips. Um, this is sort of how we did How we did it. Um, with all the games and stuff, we just, uh, it, it was just like a, I think you need probably, you need probably like eight, at least an eight GB SD card, I guess, for the internet. And the Raspberry Pi is strong enough to help power from run the games. So, yeah, for like just loading stuff on, you just take the SD card out, plug in your computer, and throw stuff on it. It's not easy. Yeah. 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 He was in there for what he had to do is he had to, uh, you either can download it from the internet because it basically has an Ethernet port on it, or you can put it onto a USB stick or something and attach it to the mobile. I guess it's not like for the operating system on it. And just so you know, these are all obviously not on the game. Unnecessary legal swing. Because you know, we're on the internet. Someone's going to be like, that's not right. There tends to be people on the There's a lot of prior art for, uh, for video games from decades ago. Uh, reasons why there are games and stuff like that. So, yeah, the Retro Pi is an awesome little machine. If anybody's thinking about playing around with this kind of stuff, it's a full, like you were saying, it's a full computer, right? Ethernet, all the different ports you need. And it's like, 20 or 30 bucks. So it's dirt cheap, really small, super awesome. That's probably 40 bucks. 40 bucks somewhere? Yeah, this was the type of key. There's, there's, there's two types now. Like, oh, right. right. The model key. So we get the model key and it's got more RAM and stuff. Just do it. Okay, thanks. Okay, let's have, um, can we do the shoes next? We'll have the shoes on deck and then we'll do a few videos and we'll go to the next ones. Alright, well, um, my project is with this giant keyboard right here. Um, I didn't originally start this project, it was like my creation, but I had a great really interesting Gary actually started it and he kind of passed it on to me so we both could kind of put the heads together to work on it. Um, so the way I'll just give an example first and then I'll explain it. Um, you just hit a thing and the light will turn on that goes with the key. So how uh, it works, uh, we use the, we're using a MIDI box. Uh, shield on top of the Arduino, and um, you have these wires coming out that um, they go out. The there's ground, uh, five volts, three point five volts, and 
the phone, the phone in for the cross to send out the note that the, the MIDI received from the piano. So, and then the lights are the uh, RGB needle pixel lights. Um, I didn't design these circuits, Gerhard did, so I'm not the only thing I know for sure about them is that it goes ground, uh, volts light, data in, and then volt chip. So there's two voltages, that's why there's two voltages coming out of the Arduino. One needs a powerful circuit and one needs powerful light stuff. So, yeah, and eventually I'd like this project to be turned around to not show like which light you hit, but to show it's like you should press to kind of teach people how to play piano. So instead of it turning on when you hit it, it will turn on and tell you to hit that light. And if you hit the wrong light, all the lights, you ever kind of figure this out? And I hope like all the lights go red and see you no know it's wrong and song going to start over. So that's what I worked on. Cool. All right, no questions? So you're just having like one key that connects, but would be possible to maybe like have several keys in advance so you can kind of see, okay, with this key and this key and this key, and then kind of have them scroll down? Yeah, um, we were kind of thinking like, right now we just turn on and off because we're having a lot of problems with, um, I'm using a library that already was supposed to have MIDI on, MIDI off for the light or the key, and I'm supposed to read the light burns and then it turns off. And that was supposed to turn on to the light. But that didn't work. So we have to somehow put it in a way for the light to either fade off, fade off, and then eventually now so I turn around and I'd like it to show keys in advance when you're pushing this button next to you want to push this button not to have to get oh not to wait. There's that one. So to go with the rhythm of the song you need that progression. So you guys want to know if you would like this? Uh, kind of. It kind of, um, it, yeah, like since no object work, it doesn't read them at the same time, so it does turn both lights on, it's that so. And Gerhard's actually working on this too, with another chip, and when I explain what happens with yours. Oh yeah, I tried to do some fading stuff, where you press the button, and show the light, and then sort of fade out gracefully, but uh, I was fading out the red, green, blue separately, uh, but I was doing it all in the same pack like and so, so when I was fading out the red fade out and then fade out and then yellow fade out and then it would all fade together. It was really interesting glitchy pattern. Uh, it was kind of pretty actually, but I don't have any visuals. Yeah. You, I think you but we switched from from a loop based system to air and I think we're better, but there's a lot of weird stuff in making it is a challenging protocol around. Cool, thanks. <laughs> okay, so uh, after the show, we're going to show the video, and then um, why don't we have uh, Maggie? You want to show your artwork? I think. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel. Hello, I'm Paul. Hello. And uh, what we make is a pair of players. They're one of the spectrum speakers. <laughs> so who here had lasers in their kiss? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Or bought them for the kiss. Um, I never know that she's supposed to do that. Eh? So I have to make my own. A lot. <laughs> um, so what we did is we got a different type of microphone controller from Adafruit. And it's called, called Flora. Yeah, called the Flora. Uh, it's a little circle. Kind of a sketching, it's the last thing. Um, it has a triple A battery pack in the tongue of the shoe. So we can just put it on this. Um, both the battery pack and the Flora have switches, so both the lead feature to be on it would afford the battery pack to actually light up the shoes. So there's a whole bunch of different pattern modes that I'll show you. I'm trying to figure out where the best place to stand is. So if anyone can show me like that. You just go up and down the, the aisles. Oh, that one actually, yeah. Okay. So basically there's two sensors in the sole of the shoe. There's one on the ball of the foot and one on the heel. And they're made with uh, bell staffs. And that is a black, uh, kind of a variable resistor sort of thing. It's like this thing is a sheet of paper almost. 
and you loop around a uh, piece of conductive thread and tape it together, and then sew it throughout the shoe to the mount control. So I'll just switch them on. And so the first pattern is just basic purple on every step. And then there's a second pattern that's random. And they'll sync together as the same color because of the clock in the mic control. But if you misstep that, then there's another mode that's a more unique pattern. It's just kind of like a sparkly pink. <laughs> then um, now this mode is what we tried to be tried to be the biggest part of the shoe, which we can break all. I'll start down here. <laughs> um, so the next mode is supposed to show the light depending on how fast you're going. So if you're walking, it'll just be blue. If you're walking slow, and if you're running, it'll be red. Um, we tried to do a little more complex stuff where um, we gauge the speed and change the color of the light. Didn't really work out so well. So we had to decide that when the heel sensor strikes first, you're walking, and then when you're running, you're more up on the ball of your foot. It's so walking, which doesn't always work, and then running. Thank <laughs> you. 